In this section, we're going to study quadratic functions and their properties. Quadratic functions are the next step in our study of polynomials after looking at linear functions. To begin, a quadratic function is a function of the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all real numbers, and we make the constraint that a is not equal to zero. Because if a was equal to zero, you lose the x squared term, and you're left with only bx plus c, which is a linear function, uh, something that we studied in 3.1. Now the domain of any quadratic function is going to be all real numbers, right? You can take a number, you can square it, you can multiply it by another number, you can take that first number you started with, multiply it by a different number, and then you can add all the results together. So there's no restriction on the domain because it's just multiplication and addition. Now the graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. And there's going to be two cases, right? If A is positive, the graph of the quadratic function is said to be concave up, and that looks like a smiley face. If A is negative, the graph of the quadratic function is concave down, and that looks like a frowny face. Now, the lowest or highest point of a parabola, so the absolute min or the absolute max, um, is going to be called the vertex of the parabola. <clears throat> and the vertical line passing through the vertex of a parabola is called the axis of symmetry. All right, so if you think back to your algebra classes from high school, You've seen parabolas before, they're extremely symmetric, and this vertical line that passes through the vertex cuts that parabola right in half, and that's where the symmetry comes in. Now we're gonna have to review something that might be a little bit tricky, but hopefully you've seen it before and we can work through it. Um, before we can graph parabolas or quadratic functions, we need to review completing the square. And the reason behind that is because the graph of any or the graph of any quadratic function is a parabola. And since all parabolas are really just stretched versions of each other or shifted versions vertically or horizontally, we'll have to convert our function f of x in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, into a different form where it's a times x plus h quantity squared plus k. And we're going to accomplish that by completing the square. Now, before we dive into completing the square for the general thing and then applying it to this example, let's see what happens if we multiply this out. So that gives us a. If we FOIL x plus h times x plus h, we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus k. Now this two right here is going to be very important when we start talking about completing the square. So to begin, in the general case, we need to factor out a from both the x squared and the x term, but not the c term. So that gives us b over a, x. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space right here, and that c, we did not change at all. Now, since we're looking to take this expression and turn it into something that looks like this, this would be the intermediate step. So notice that we have the a's out front, we have an x squared as the first thing, then we have plus something times x, and then we need to figure out what goes right here. Since this two popped up when we squared, what we'll do is take the b over a and cut it in half. So we're going to do half of that. And before we add anything to the problem, we're going to square this. Because if you look over here, 
If you take 2h and divide it by 2, you get h, and then the next term was h squared. This is the thing that we're going to be adding right here. Now, by adding only this thing, we fundamentally changed our function, and so we have to subtract something to make it the same function we started with. If you were to distribute this a to this term right here, you would get b squared over 4a. Now, since we added it here, we have to subtract it there. All right, we are in prime position to rewrite our function. So again, we have x, and what we're gonna do is reverse this step to bring us back up to here. So x squared plus b over a x plus b squared over four a squared factors as x plus b over two a quantity squared plus c minus b squared over four a. And if you want to, I recommend pausing the video, foiling this out, and making sure it matches up here. And you can go one step further and distribute this a, and make sure that when you combine like terms, you end up back at the original spot. So what this gives us is our h right here, b over 2a, and this gives us our k right here c minus b squared over 4a. And if you remember the quadratic formula, there is a b squared in there somewhere, there's a 4ac. This is how you end up proving the quadratic formula. We'll see that at the end of this section. Now we're going to take this setup and apply it to this quadratic. So again, we're first going to factor out the number closest or next to x squared from both the x squared term and the x term. So if we take negative 2 out of negative 2x, we're left with x squared. If we take negative 2 out of 6x, we'll be left with negative 3x and then leave a little space plus 2. Then we come over here. This negative three is b over a. <clears throat> so the first thing we have to do is take negative three and divide it by two. And then the next thing we have to do is square it. So negative three times negative three gives us nine. And two over, or two times two gives us four. <clears throat> and that is what we add over here. All right, so if we were to take negative 2 and multiply it into 9 over 4, let's keep track of where, what's happening. So you would get negative 2 times 9, giving you negative 18, divided by 4. And if we simplify that, we can knock out the twos that these things share, which gives us negative nine over two. So in total, by introducing this nine over four, we really introduced a negative nine over two into this function, which means we need to undo that by adding it back in. Now we're able to take this and factor it. So the quick trick, is this right here is the number that goes right here. And we can simplify this down. Two is really four over two. And once you have common denominators, you can do four plus nine, giving you 13 over two. So this is our h, which is negative three over two and our k, 
k, which is 13 over 2. Neat. So what we're going to do is apply that to help us graph this quadratic function. So we know that f of x is equal to negative 2 times x minus 3 over 2 squared plus 13 over 2. And if you think back to our transformations section, the negative, I'm going to list it out in order, the negative means reflect over the x axis. So we are looking at something that looks like a frowny face instead of a smiley face. The next is the two. So the two means that it is a vertical stretch by a factor of two. This negative three over two next to the x, so inside the squared, Remember that if it's a negative next to the x, it is opposite of how you want to interpret it. So this is actually a shift to the right by 3 over 2 units. And now lastly, we have the plus 13 over 2 at the very end which means this is a vertical shift. Since 13 over two is a positive, this is up by 13 over two. All right, now we can piece this all together. So we know that we're looking at a frowny face. We know that we look, we're looking at a parabola that's a little bit more squeezed in or condensed than your typical parabola and we know where the vertex is going to be, right? Because we're gonna to shift to the right three over two units. So that brings us to one half. And we're also shifting it up by 13 over two, which is six and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six. So right here is going to be our vertex. This is three over two comma 13 over two. Once we have the vertex plotted and we know that it's upside down, I like to find the y-intercept just to give me a sense of how steep this is. So if we plug in zero for x, we end up getting negative two, zero squared, plus six times zero plus two, anything that has a zero that's multiplied just knocks it out. So we're left with two, which means our y-intercept is two. Since this thing is highly symmetric, if we go one and a half over, we're underneath the vertex. If we go one and a half over again, we would have that other point. So once we have those three points, we can go ahead and sketch this thing. And that is our graph for this quadratic function. f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 2.